Okay, I'm gonna do another one of my wildly popular body shop tool videos. My last video has nine views, so uh, it's pretty good. Uh, these are some of my air tools, actually probably just about all of them. I might have forgotten something, but uh, I'm gonna go through real quick what, uh, what I got here. Okay, we'll start off back here. This cheap uh, little saw, totally worthless. Don't even waste your money. Uh, I bought that to replace uh, an older one, and I was very disappointed. And then I broke down and bought this snap-on unit. Yes, this is expensive. I like to have a whip on it. Um, it's worth the money. That's uh, maybe a couple years old. Forget what I paid for it, but a lot. Um, go back here this is a blue point angle drill uh, i bought this probably in the 90s uh it was always totally gutless virtually useless i used to go through a little of these die grinders because i used to use the rolock disc or the rice cakes on there um and, and i just never throw them away so like that is you know pretty much wore out this one i use once in a while when i got to die grind something that's pretty much wore out uh, this half-inch snap-on drill is from, uh, what's it from? It's from 1990 I bought this. Um, it doesn't get a lot of use. I think I had to have it overhauled one time. Maybe not. I don't think that's the original. can't be the original sticker. must have been remanned once. Um, but rarely use it. This thing has got way more power than I ever need. Uh, air hammers. I prefer this short barrel one. Okay, for, uh, for body work, in my opinion, the shortest barrel is the best because it's the fastest. The piston has, the piston or the hammer or whatever you want to call it, has the shortest distance to travel. So it's faster. So it cuts sheet metal faster. It just doesn't have any power. Uh, problem is Snap-on no longer makes these and they no longer warranty them. When you send this one in for warranty, this is the one you get back. It's the medium duty one. And this is a brand new one freshly rebuilt unit I have as a spare uh, this is the one I'm using and this is even no that's the same length uh, it's fine it's great I mean they make a more powerful one but I have no need for that much power um, and it just weighs more so this is a little bit light uh, for sheet metal it's uh, all you need um, okay so that's that that's why I have three air chisels uh, this glass knife um, for cutting out windshields and quarter glasses and stuff. Uh, I got this used for like 15 bucks. I don't use it that often, but when I do. Uh, these Matco long die grinders, I've had these for, oh geez, maybe 10 years. Uh, bulletproof, good investment. I don't remember what they cost, but they're worth it. This uh, I bought is, uh, I bought this off of on eBay. I forget the brand, but it is uh, it has got a lot of power and it didn't cost much. Problem is now that I use uh, belt sander, I don't use that too much. This cutoff wheel is from Dentfix. Um, uh, if you don't have one of these, uh, get one. I use this constantly, um, and the best thing to do for that. For wheels, is to use these Denfix. Well, they're not Denfix, but Denfix sells them. I think they're Norton four-inch discs. These things last forever. So that's definitely what you want. <clears throat> what else we got here? Okay, uh, more of these little die grinders. I use these for assorted things. Uh, if you're doing body work, hey, everybody's got to everybody's got to grind a hole out. Everybody's got to bore a hole out once in a while. Uh, this die grinder bit that's flat is awesome because if you got to ream a fender out a little bit, you can fit it down in there flat. You know, the fender's still in the car and and you can ream out that hole. Understand what I'm saying? You go you go in like this, and you can ream out the hole a little bit while you are still got the fender against the panel. I know, you top body men out there never had to ream anything. Uh, this, just with a little scrap of wheel off of that, I use once in a while for getting in a tight spot. We talked about the saw, uh, 3 8 drill. Once again, this is from 1991. Um, all the 
you know, the guys that talk shit about Snap-on and it's overpriced and everything. Um, you know, run a run a drill for for 30 years and uh, well, 91. That's not 30 years, is it? Whatever. I don't even know. I don't even know what day it is. <clears throat> 25 years, whatever. Uh, uh, and, and see how your cheap drill holds up. I mean, maybe it'll do it. Maybe not. Uh, the other air chills we talked about. Um, up here, over here, we have this is where I keep all my chisel bits. Once again, snap on chisel. Uh, it's very expensive, but guess what? It's warrantied. So this is a brand new one I just had warrantied. Um, I probably bought the original chisel of this, again, 20, 30 years ago, and I warrantied it 100 times. So money well spent. Um, drill bits, I never buy good drill bits. I always buy junk, and that way I don't feel bad when I lose them or break them. Hole saw kit, uh, easy out kit, junk, uh, scraps of this and that. Um, uh, MBX wheels, those are awesome. Uh, all the little wrenches and all that crap. Uh, you got that. Okay, up here, we'll start over here. This belt sander, this actually belongs to the shop, not me. This 3M one is okay. It's not, uh, it's not the best. The Dynabraid one is the best, but it's like five, six hundred bucks. And I want one, it's on my list, but we'll see. Uh, this uh, spot weld drill I talked about in a different video. I always keep that down here. This is one of my favorite tools. If you don't have one, you really should get one. Put that away. Uh, MBX wheel. Uh, there's a lot of different, a lot of different ones, um, but I think they all come from a, like the same place. And this is Monty. And I got this on eBay, and it, it seems to me like maybe somebody rifled them from work and sold a whole bunch of them, because I've never seen this one again. I wanted to buy a second one for retail. This thing has tons of power. It's nice and small, and I paid like 150 bucks for it. Uh, another big die grinder. This, I don't like air, air ratchets, and I gave up on them, and so I decided I would try this butterfly thing and uh, for certain applications I suppose it's uh, it's the right tool but for me I almost never use it. this air nibbler I used to use this a lot when I was <clears throat> younger and doing rust work and making patches and stuff but never anymore uh, this little Mac grinder seemed like a great idea useless because the discs unless there's better discs available now the disc that I could get for it would wear out instantly so it was useless another another cutoff wheel um, you know kick-ass uh, 3 8 ratchet don't use it much anymore and it's from another one from 1990 so this is I've had since 1990 uh, and uh, and it goes good I, I bought one about a, a year before this and in a fit of rage, I, smacked, I whacked it on the frame machine, and I broke it in half. So uh, the first one lasted like a year. The second one, uh, you know, like 27 years. So that's that. Uh, impact. Half-inch impact, I don't use it very often, just for wheels and clamps on the frame machine. Uh, this Mac thing is uh, just fine. It's not the most powerful. Uh, it's certainly not the lightest. This thing is like a club. Uh, I want it to die so I can buy one of those new Ingersoll Rand lightweight ones, but it just keeps going. Uh, this tool is uh, 3.8 Snap-on Impact. Again, it's from 1990. Um, they bought a lot of my stuff in, in, the, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, once again, you buy a cheap one, will it last this long? Do you need it to last that long? I don't know. Uh, this angle grind, this, uh, what do you call this, uh, five inch grinder, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, rarely use it. This is a blue point. It's way underpowered. I would not advise. Uh, Mac, little DA, uh, three inch. Uh, use it all the time. It's never given me a, not one hiccup. Very happy with that. This is a Maco. This is actually a polisher, but I, uh, I managed to, uh, oh, this is a polisher head that you put, you're supposed to put a pad on, but I put a little three inch DA pad on there and I use this for removing paint if I'm gonna do uh, 
filler work on uh, on something that I don't I don't want to go at with anything stronger. I try not to, to to remove paint with anything more than 80 anymore. Maybe once in a while 40, but it just the gouges are too big. It takes too much of the galvanizing off. This seems a lot more delicate, and I never put uh, I never put filler on paint ever, so I always remove that. Uh, the big grinder I used to use this in the old days constantly. Um, but nowadays, almost never. So if you're if you're getting started, if you're starting off doing body work, uh, first thing I would advise for you is stop. Don't go do something else. This is a horrible uh, profession. But if you got to do it, <clears throat> uh, something like this you don't need. Not just yet. Uh, unless unless you're doing, I don't know. Unless you're, I don't know what you would be doing where you wouldn't need this anymore. Times have changed. Uh, air file. Uh, Back in the 80s, you would uh, you could walk into a body shop and you would hear three, four of these things running all day, every day. Now, almost never. Uh, for 20 years, I worked in very high quality shops and uh, I probably used this thing once every three years, honestly, never. Uh, now I'm, I'm back in a normal shop and I use it uh, a couple times a year. That's about it. Uh, mud hog, um, you gotta have it and you gotta buy a good one. This is National Detroit. Uh, I don't think National Detroit is around anymore. Uh, there's other ones that look like it that are knockoffs. Uh, Snap-on makes a good one. That's really not too too priced, too high priced. You want it to be gear drive. Uh, when you need it, you need it to be powerful and you need it to be efficient. And this thing will rock and roll through anything you need. And once again, this is from the 90s. Uh, this little DA is probably from 2000s maybe. And uh, I use this every day until this came along. <coughs> and this is uh, a 3M with a vacuum bag. I also use this with my regular shop vac with an adapter hose. Um, and the difference is unbelievable. And it, you're sucking up your dust. So that's the only reason I worry about this. I don't have a, a, like a painter's DA, like a, a real fine DA. Uh, this does just fine, and then the painters take it from there. Uh, so uh, that's about it. I'm trying not to make these videos too long. Uh, I mean, I always say um a lot, and they're not very professional. If if any of these videos actually get views, like say, say for instance, maybe a thousand views, uh, I might come back and make a higher quality video. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, my kids aren't even watching the videos anymore, so uh, hmm, my view count is pretty low. But uh, who knows? So uh, that's it, and we'll see you next time.